This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash microcosmos to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Every time we see diatoms, we have to give it to them. They're just simply stunning. They're single-celled and major producers of the oxygen we breathe, but the real reason we love seeing them is because of their frustules, those silica shells they construct for themselves to live in. They're architects building stained glass walls to float in, and the effect is beautiful. But, Apparently, diatoms are not content to rest on their ornate laurels because some don't just construct a home for themselves, they construct a much larger structure that houses a whole gathering of diatoms, an apartment building made of one long tube. Yes, a tube. They're really striking to look at, like, pieces of hay or strands of hair braided together. The tubes we're looking at right now come from Iceland. Our master of microscopes, James, sent his assistant Ella there on a microbe hunt, collecting samples from a bunch of different places. But they saved the marine samples for last because those organisms tend to be more delicate to handle. So on this last collecting session, James was on a video call, watching as Ella scanned the dock she was standing on. And along the submerged parts of the dock, James spotted tufts of brownish stuff peeking out as the waves broke. So he asked Ella to grab some and bring them back. The next day, she arrived at 6 a.m. and crashed on the couch, while James immediately grabbed the samples to take a look. And apparently, the entire time he was saying, this is so beautiful. The samples that Ella brought back from the dock were teeming with diatoms. It might seem surprising that the waters of Iceland can bring forth so much life, especially during the cold and dark winter months. But this matches James's experience with the ponds in Poland he gathers samples from, which often end up dominated by diatoms during the winter, even as green algae numbers drop. Diatoms seem to be fairly hardy in the dark. One study found that diatoms survive longer than flagellates in extended periods of darkness. The researchers didn't find a specific reason why they're able to tolerate the dark for so long, but they theorized that perhaps the diatoms were more conservative and how they managed energy reserves. Others have also suggested that their survival might be due to oil stored in the diatoms, which may keep them better stocked compared to other organisms. Their survival in winter means that when spring rolls around, diatoms are often the first groups to bloom in polar waters. And perhaps these tube-like structures are part of their success. They're not found as often in warmer waters, but things are different when it gets cold. In 1994, a scientist found a whole bunch of these tubes along the Dutch coast in late winter. And by a whole bunch, I mean there were more than 10 billion diatom cells living in tubes per square meter. These tubular colonies start with one diatom, secreting a thread of mucus from a pore, which it weaves into a tube. Living in a mucus tube might not have the same romantic feel as the diatom stained glass shells, but diatoms don't have much need for romance. As the tube gets longer and longer, the cell reproduces asexually, dividing and populating the tube with more cells like it so they can travel through their shared home and add to it. With every cell, a new roommate and construction worker is added, a cell that can strengthen and add to the tube 
by producing more mucus. At times, the cells might reproduce faster than the tube can expand, at which point they might start to create a little side tunnel. Their tube is a colony, and they might end up attached to surfaces like sand particles or a submerged Icelandic dock. And they're kind of similar to colonies we've seen on this channel, like Volvox and their spherical gatherings. One thing that's strange though, is that based on what little we know about these tubes, it doesn't seem as if these diatoms do much to coordinate their activity. This is different from Volvox, where various cells take on different functions and they work together to create a better life for everyone. But some of these diatoms act like they've constructed a crowded city street just to ignore each other. A group of coworkers who don't even say hi to each other in the hallway. They're little independent entities, countless ships passing in the night. And for those living in narrower tubes, there's no movement at all. They're simply stuck in place next to a family member they don't acknowledge. But there must be a reason they live together in these tubes. Otherwise, why bother with the time and energy it takes to start making a tube and to keep adding to it? The tube might be a form of protection, making the diatoms too big for microbial predators to consume. But it's probably also a way to help the diatoms access light through a few different mechanisms. To start, the tubes help lift the diatoms away from the substrate they might have sunk to, raising them towards any light that might penetrate the water. And as they float in the water, the tubes allow the diatoms to move with the rhythm of the waves, illuminating all sides in the process. At least, that's one of the possibilities for why these diatoms turn to tubes. But stepping back from the why, it's like we're starting to see more of who diatoms are. They're builders. They may have never set out to become that, but their approach to the world around them has been to build, to assemble, to make something functional and beautiful, even if the beauty is not the point. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create their website. So whether you're looking to create an online portfolio, start a blog, or open an online store, Squarespace can help you out. Maybe it's time for you to take your bookstagram to the next level by starting a whole book review blog. Well, Squarespace has the tools you need. They make it super simple to categorize, schedule, and share your blog posts. And with Squarespace, you can interact with your community of fellow book lovers through threaded comments and replies. And if you decide you want to start selling custom bookmarks and book sleeves, Squarespace can help you out there as well. Squarespace is already a powerful e-commerce platform, but you can even go the extra mile and add third-party extensions to help you manage inventory, streamline bookkeeping, and ship products across the world. And you can do all of this on one easy to use platform. So go to squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash microcosmos to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The names on the screen are our Patreon patrons. These are the people who have decided to directly support this channel over at patreon.com slash journey to micro. So we always wanna take this time at the end of our videos to thank them for their support. If you wanna see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, you can check out Jam and Germs on Instagram and TikTok. And you can also find Journey to the Microcosmos on TikTok now if you want some micro microcosmos. And if you wanna see more from us here on YouTube, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby.